Welcome to Uncage, a show that celebrates thought leadership from today's top business leaders. The program provides a voice to amazing executives from around the globe who are shaping the world of business today and mapping the path to the commerce of tomorrow. Today, we're speaking with Greg McPherson. Greg, how are you? We're doing great, Ben. Thank you very much. We're going to be talking with Greg about the broader topic of wellness and science and bringing science, really science innovation to people more rapidly and effectively. Greg actually does a variety of different things. He's the founder at the SRW Laboratories. We'll talk about what they're working on in a second. He's also the co-founder of the Wellness Access Institute that aims to position itself as the leading authority and innovation accelerator in the wellness industry. And so much more, Greg. Greg is very active in a lot of things really related to, as we said, wellness, science, and bringing innovation to individuals faster. Greg, great to talk with you. Tell us a little bit about yourself and your career. Yeah, thanks, Ben. Um, so I'm a pharmacist by trade. I've um, been in the industry now for 30 years and uh, joined that industry because uh, when I have a, an affinity to science and, and, and love that stuff, but also love helping people. And um, and so kicked off my career um, in pharmacy, starting a business which looked after rest homes and hospitals. So just looking mm -hmm. at people at the end of end of their lives and making sure that their uh, medication was was right and we were giving them the most comfortable um, time. Um, around about then, I also started the uh, New Zealand's first online pharmacy, so something called Pharmacy Direct, and that was a. A, 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 it was one of those things where I saw this new thing called the internet, thought, oh, this just looks interesting. Mm -hmm. And uh, and so kicked off on that journey and we uh, turned 25 years in November last year. Congratulations. Um, yeah, yeah, thank you. It's a, a granddaddy of internet businesses, right? Um, and then about 10 years ago, I got involved in biotech, uh, started uh, doing some consulting with a New Zealand company um, and was invited to get uh, to be their CEO um, and that was just a kicked off a pretty incredible journey I've, I've always really been interested in the intersection of pharmacy and and technology which is yeah. kind of the internet side um, um, and we were the first people to bring robotic the country as well in terms of dispensing robots um, but then the mixing up uh, biotech and pharmacy was kind of the next path and so that's that's what I did and uh, more recently the last three years have been working on SRW Laboratories, which is a, a company which is, is it's really there to challenge the way that people think and experience about aging. You know, I'm getting to that point in life where age is starting to hurt a little bit. And um, <laughs> so what can, we do? what can we do about it? That's great. Well, I mean, anything that uh, helps on aging is key. Tell us a little bit more about SRW Laboratories, because that sounds like something that you're really focusing on and building right now. I've seen that you talked a little bit about harnessing the nine hallmarks of aging. Tell us a little bit more about that. Yeah, thanks, Ben. Well, yeah, Harnessing the Nine Hallmarks of Aging actually is, is a book I wrote. I, I read a paper um, about three years ago called The Hallmarks of Aging, and that paper was pretty exciting because it, it pretty much outlined nine areas that drive aging in our cells. And as a pharmacist, I didn't see just the nine areas that were driving aging us or nine targets that we could act on to actually modulate aging. So as part of just doing a deep dive into that paper and looking at all the research around it, I thought it was really important that we actually make this accessible to everybody. So I wrote a book, which was my, my attempt at translating that, that deep science into something that we can all read. I'm not sure if I quite got it right, but it was... Uh, <laughs> It was really, uh, you know, when you write a book, you learn a lot. So that was really one of the, the purposes of it. Um, and in the process of, of that book, I realized that really there were no uh, products out there in the market that could actually help people um, not have to sort of try and put all the pieces together themselves, but actually mm -hmm. curate um, some of the compounds that we know that help us with healthier aging and put it together. So that's really where SRW Laboratories was born. Um, and it's really just, um, we, yeah, we're all about just helping people age better because we can, we've got the knowledge now that we understand cellular aging. And so um, this is really, you know, uh, the first step in that journey. Will you be productizing or offering services or a mix? Yeah, we, we have a, a range of products now that um, support cellular health and cellular aging. Okay. And then we're also building out uh, ranges which help various health conditions that, uh, you know, that afflict us all as we age. Um, and you'll find that at srw.co. 
Uh, SRW stands for Science Research Wellness. Well, I will definitely take a look as, uh, you know, every decade that passed seems to be filled with different aches and pains that I didn't expect. <laughs> so, so I think we all probably need that. But, you know, I have you here as the co-founder of the Wellness Access Institute, which sounds equally interesting. Tell me a little bit more about what that group is up to. Yeah, what we are aiming to do here is to just speed up the, um, the, the, the you know, there's, there's just so much science happening right now. And so um, traditionally, it can take decades to get that accessible to people. And so it's really about how do we create a framework where, you know, the people that are doing the work and finding the breakthroughs, how do we support them bring products uh, more quickly to market and, and just support those innovators. But at the same time, um, you know, wellness is actually not something that is a privilege. It's actually something that's, a, you know, something that we should all experience. And so part of it is also helping people and um, supporting research and projects, et cetera, which are really supporting that so that we can do better. And, and you know, wellness is, is it's not going to say it's simple, but um, there are things we can all do right now which can actually are uh, free and uh, just simple little habits um, that that can have a significant impact on our health and our lifespan. And so it's also about you know supporting that and just helping people um, start to communicate that globally. That's great. I mean, if you have one that you could throw out, that'd be great. I'd love to hear any ideas that you have on improving wellness. It's fascinating for me because I think of that, even the word wellness is something that has emerged over, I'd say, the last couple of decades. I don't remember ever hearing about wellness before that. And now it seems to be almost like the overarching phrase for kind of a new way of thinking about health, pushing things to the next level, living with more balance. But I'm just curious, what are you seeing right now? What is the focus in the broader wellness space? And what are you excited about? I'm super excited about, um, I guess, pre prevention healthcare, right? Preventative healthcare. So what I mean by that is the, the current health system is actually a break-fix model. Go and see your doctor when something's broken. Um, and, and that's actually a flawed system. We actually need to get in front of that. Like we look after our cars, we take them into the shop once every six months, we get them looked after and they get, we get them serviced. Well, we need to apply the same logic to our, our bodies and and it's really important we do and we start right now because 25% of the population is going to be over the age of 60 in just a little over 25 years. And if we carry on the way we're going, we're going to turn up there and it's going to overwhelm the health system. It's just not going to work. So we actually need to start right now like getting getting people aware and thinking about how do you keep this, this, this body as good as possible for as long as possible. And there are real simple things that we can do to do that. So it's a few behavioral changes, it's a few supplements, it's, a, it's diet, it's exercise, all the stuff that we inherently know. Um, but also checking in with the health professional regularly so that you can spot things early and sort them out because it's, you know, there's a lot of issues that uh, kind of bubble under the surface for 10 years. And then all of a sudden you get hit and you go, wow, how did that happen? And it's like, yeah, well, it's pretty obvious, really. But uh, so it's, you know, I think this is the next mega trend in healthcare. Yeah, I, I agree. I agree. And it's interesting because I feel like maybe the focus has been a bit accelerated. You'll tell me about what's happened over the last couple of years. And we've lived through this moment. Based on all the data that I hear, you guys got it more right than anybody in New Zealand. But the pandemic certainly changed the focus and actually placed the focus on health. I don't think I've ever spoken so much about healthcare related matters in my life. But in some ways, I would imagine it's stimulated a deeper interest in some of these things. Tell me how you look at the last couple of years and what has it done for what you're working on? Yeah, well, look, I mean, first of all, New Zealand has been incredibly fortunate uh, over, over the uh, pandemic period. Um, and, and I think you know, we've had the benefit of having a large moat and uh, not having too many people down here. So that's, that's you know, definitely really helped out. Um, but we've been through it like everybody. Um, it, we sort of delayed it a little bit, but uh, the, the pandemic came. It's still raging here. I think we lose mm. uh, it's a, a bunch of people every week um, mm. to, to, to COVID. Um, but, you know, and, and so starting a business during COVID has been a blessing and a curse. Um, one, you've got more time because you're not traveling quite as much. Um, at the same time, you're not getting up to the markets that you need to get up to to talk and start to um, share what you're doing. So both of those things have been, um, I guess, for us and against us. 
But um, you're absolutely right. Um, people are really starting to understand why, why it's so important to have good health and, uh, and look at changing behaviours and, and purchasing habits to um, support that. So net, net, I, I hope we come through this in a, in a, in a really positive way. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, there is, I guess, the, the silver, well, like silver lining of every, of every cloud, uh, but that's not to obviously um, und, uh, undermine all those people that have suffered through this because it's been yeah. a pretty horrendous experience. Yeah, no, and it's been interesting. I mean, certainly, I think there are people that seem to be suffering from this syndrome of long COVID, which sounds terribly debilitating. But you know, we do see us coming out now. And I would say that there does seem to be an interest in staying healthier, which is key. It's interesting that the younger generations today seem to be more aware of health or less aware. I think much, much more aware, Ben. And yeah. I almost think that happens every generation. We just get a little bit better at it. Um, you know, the last 200 years has seen our lifespan double. I mm. think the next 20 years, might, we might see the same. And wow. I think all these young, younger people uh, who are looking after their cells and looking after their bodies well are actually going to benefit from this. And so, you know, it's, it's exciting for them. And we, we've just got to keep our bodies in good a shape as possible to see, you know, how much we can benefit. Uh, but there are some quite remarkable technologies coming, which will significantly uh, give uh, give us the opportunity to extend our health span. Um, so, you know, we, you and I could be looking the same in 50 years and, um, <laughs> and that would be quite dangerous, I suspect. <laughs> well, we'll see what that means and how that works. But let's just talk about the next year. Here we are at the beginning of 2023, Greg. And I'd just be curious to see what you see on the horizon and what's on the horizon for some of your businesses. Yeah, like I think uh, I'm, I'm cautiously optimistic with this this year in terms of um, obviously there are you know these recessions or threats of recessions, uh, but uh, we're in a, an area where um, it's a priority for people to spend on their health, and so um, with the, I guess we we we're very fortunate um, that that's that it should mean good things for our business. Um, in terms of the focus, um, I'm going to write an, another book, um, Bent. I think it's. Um, time to sort of shed a little bit of light on that um, preventative wellness um, picture and just, just give, give people a bit of a guidebook on what to do. Mm -hmm. um, we uh, do a lot of business into China um, and uh, because of their experiencing the pandemic right now, um, we actually have a uh, challenge to keep up with the demand for our products. So that's, that's a focus. And uh, we also have an NPD pipeline, so new products that are coming through. So huge focus with the team on on perfecting those and bringing those through to market. With the Y project, we 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 founded that last year, so uh, it's a very formative year for us as we sit to sit down and um, start to communicate our mission, vision, and attracting people into the platform. Well, we've been talking about a lot of different elements in the broader wellness space, and certainly 2023 promises to be a very active year for all of your endeavors, Greg. If someone wanted to learn more about what you're working on, where's the best place for someone to find you? Yeah, um, pop across to srw.co uh, or scienceresearchwellness.com. Um, if you pop onto Amazon and look for Harnessing the Nine Hallmarks of Aging, you'll find my book. Um, it just is really a healthy aging handbook, if you will, it's, uh, for the rest of us. Uh, and uh, yeah, check me out on LinkedIn, uh, Greg McPherson, SRW, you'll find me. That's excellent. Well, Greg, it's been an enlightening conversation. And I would say an exciting one to hear that there's actually some promise, some breakthroughs, and some ways that people can improve what they're doing on the health side, and really to kind of make a commitment to living a wellness-centric lifestyle. So Greg, thank you so much for being on Uncaged today, and we look forward to having you back. Thanks very much, Ben. Great to talk with you. Cheers. Cheers.